back to On The Hook. I'm Dylan, and today we're taking this mahi-mahi filet and making a wonderful pineapple salsa taco. Hi, I'm Dylan Foster, and I love seafood. I've been in the Myrtle Beach area for more than 15 years, and since then, my life has revolved around seafood. From cooking and catching it, to serving and selling it, I've done just about everything you can do in this industry. So come and join me as we tour the places, faces, and tales of Myrtle Beach seafood. This is On The Hook. This is our last episode where we cut this beautiful mahi-mahi. Make sure you go back and check that out because there's lots of informative tips and tricks. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button so you can check out all our other videos where we explore the places, faces, and tales of your Myrtle Beach seafood. Now before we get started here on this mahi-mahi, let's talk about what we're going to do with it for our lunch. We're going to make a taco with some pineapple uh, and red pepper and red onion salsa, a little sweet, a little heat, and a lot of delicious. Then we're gonna top it with a cilantro lime crema, which is gonna balance out that heat and give it a real nice finished flavor with that lime and the cilantro notes there at the end. But we like to know what we're gonna do with the fish before we cut it so that we know how we're gonna cut it and portion it. And because we're gonna do a taco, we're gonna cut it into taco portions. So to do that, we're gonna take our beautiful filet here, skinned and boned, nothing in there to stop us, and we're just gonna split it right down the middle here, right down the spine line, into two loins of the filet, the bottom loin and then this top loin. Now when you're looking at this loin, check out that bright red bloodline there. That's what that's called, the bloodline. It's in between the meat and the skin itself and that is bright, beautiful ruby red as you can see and that's a good sign. That's how you know that this fish is A, really fresh, but B, just out of the water and the best possible fish that you can feed your family. We'll flip it over here on its top and now I like to make big taco pieces. I don't want the taco to be filled with all the other stuff, right? If I'm having a fish taco, let's make it about the fish. That's the star of the show. So we're gonna make nice, long, relatively large little portions here. Of our mahi mahi, and that's what I'm talking about. That right there, now that is a little large, but that's gonna be a really good taco. I'd rather have a big taco than a small taco. So we'll do a couple more here. Just go right down the filet. I'm gonna give the camera guys lunch today as well, so I'm cutting extra. You gotta feed your friends, right? <laughs> so with these taco portions already cut, let's move this filet out of the way. And now we're just gonna season them up. To do that, we're gonna use our house blend seasoning. This is something that I make in our shop, a custom blend, we call it house seasoning, very creative name. But if you have a house or a general purpose seasoning that you like to use in your kitchen, go ahead and do that. And go ahead and let me know in your, through the comments of what you like to use when you're looking for a general all-purpose seasoning. This stuff I like to use obviously on fish, but it actually goes really well on chicken and steak and vegetables. Really good on everything. When my kids are acting up, I sprinkle a little bit of this on them, and I actually like them a little bit. No matter what they do. Nice and even season all the way around. Make sure we got that flavor evenly distributed throughout. Give it a little toss, make sure there's no bare spots and no heavy spots. Like that, found one. Here we go. And that is some nicely seasoned, evenly seasoned mahi-mahi portions ready for the taco. Now they are gonna shrink a little bit. You might be saying, Dylan, these taco pieces are a little too big for what you're working on. They are gonna shrink down a little bit, so I cut them with that in mind. Before we do our vegetable prep, I'm gonna to have to clean up my board here a little bit and bring my wooden cutting board out to start chopping on these vegetables. All right, so to make our pineapple salsa, A, we're gonna start with the pineapple, the main ingredient. So when you're shopping for a pineapple in the grocery store, a couple of things that I like to look at, and you should too. First, find one that's got a little bit of yellow in it. If it's really bright green, it's not quite as ripe, so you wanna let that sit a little longer. You wanna find a little bit of yellow throughout. When you squeeze it, it should be firm but not hard. It should have a, definitely some give to it, and it should smell 
like a fresh pineapple, right? A good pineapple smells like a good pineapple. So that's what I look for when I'm shopping for a pineapple at my local market. Also, the, the leaves of the fronds here, make sure that they're nice and bright, uh, but not dingy and kind of beat up looking. If they're beat up, the, the pineapple also is probably beat up, but also not bright green like it just came off of the off the plant because if they're bright green that means that this is probably a little under ripe so you want to make sure you find something that is kind of in the middle so nice yellow color nice tender texture and a beautiful smell of pineapple we all love that pineapple now to cut this i'm using my chef's knife the santuco blade take the top right off just like that take the bottom off so i have a nice flat surface Put those to the side, make a little decoration for your table. Oh, isn't that pretty? Now I'm gonna take, bring my knife in and just start trimming the sides off of this pineapple. Nice smooth strokes, get all of that skin right off. Oh, missed the spot. There we go. All the way down. In the comments, let me know how you like to eat your pineapple, or if you have any cool tricks to cut a pineapple, let me know. I'm always looking to learn something new. A cool way to cut and present a pineapple for your next gathering or for my next gathering. Summer is here. Cookout season is upon us. Gotta love a good cookout, especially down here at the beach. And the pineapple is great for any outdoor event because it's just fresh and refreshing, really nice and juicy and sweet. So. We have it completely clean, the top, the bottom is off, and now we have the skin off. And we're gonna use, in our salsa, we wanna have nice uniform chunks, the little dice pieces. So to do that, we're gonna start by just making slices of this pineapple uniform. Try to keep it as easy as you can, all the way down. Let them fall down, don't keep bored, all the way. And then you know there's a core. So once you get to the core, turn it around, do the other side, stack these up. So we're ready for them. Come down here, nice even slices all the way down. Now speaking of cookouts, you can take that pineapple slice there, throw it on your hot grill, maybe season it with some cinnamon sugar. And that is amazing, amazing dessert. Eat it by itself. Or I like to throw a little vanilla ice cream. These last pieces off here. I don't think we're gonna use these side pieces because we'll have enough. Don't worry, they're not going to waste. It's gonna be a snack for me, and Tommy, and Kyle. So there's our core. Here's our bite-sized pieces. Now we'll take our long slices and we're gonna turn these into a dice. So we're gonna just long motion here, run that knife all the way up through. This is technically called a julienne. So that would be the official professional term, a julienne, but I like to just call them pineapple french fries. Oop. That. We did good. We did good. We got a good pineapple today. So once you have your julienne or your pineapple fries, turn them at 90 degrees and just come through in nice, uniform, small little dices. We want to keep everything the same size so that when we're eating it, it's all the same mouthfeel. We want the pineapple to be nice and evenly cut so that we have nice, uniform, and consistent pieces in our salsa. And that's what we have there, beautiful little little cubes of pineapple, right for our salsa. So that's going in our bowl, big mixing bowl here where all of our ingredients for our salsa are gonna end up landing. Scoop those in, and now we'll do the other side. Right into our bowl. There we go. Last little bit there. We want to save it. Now let's cut our red pepper. Beautiful red bell pepper. Show you a little trick. If you've watched our other episodes, you've seen me do this before, and I'm gonna do it again. I like to take the top off, turn it around, and then take the bottom off there. Put those to the side. We're definitely gonna use those. We got the top and the bottom off of this pepper, and now we're gonna take our knife perpendicular to the board. Big math term there. Look it up if you don't know what it means and then just slowly roll this pepper open. In one motion, we'll be able to cut out all the seeds, the stems, and the ribs in one motion, leaving one beautifully clean pepper 
ready to work with. So we're going to split that in half. And now just like the pineapple, we're going to cut this into little, little uniform diced pieces that are going to match the same size as our pineapple. And we're going to continue that theme throughout the salsa. We'll make our little pepper fries here. Let's say you have a vegetable tray that you're working for on your next gathering. Cut them just like this. You don't need to go any further. That will make a great addition to any veggie tray for any gathering. Everybody loves a good veggie tray. Turn them and turn these into little dice pieces, uniform squares. This last one here, pepper fries. Turn them. Rinse and repeat. All the way down through. Look at that. Nice little diced red pepper pieces ready for our salsa. Going to be beautiful as well as flavorful. And these are raw. We did not cook these peppers, obviously. So they're going to have a little bit of sweetness, definitely, but they're also going to have a little bite, a little crunch, which is going to be nice in that salsa because we're going to not want to, we want a variety of textures when you're eating a salsa, when you're making a salsa. Variety of textures. For that other texture, now let's do a red onion. So, red onions, the most popular question I get when we're doing our cooking classes is Chef, how do I keep my onions from making me cry? cut onions all the time, they make me cry, how do I stop doing that? And my answer to them is simple. Um, it's just toughen up, it's just an onion. Don't, don't let it down, don't take it too seriously, but obviously I'm joking. For me, I like to keep my onions cold. A cold onion will make you cry less. Also use a sharp knife and just work quickly. That's really the best tricks of the trade. And I'll start with the top off and the bottom off, just like that. Take those and you can toss those. You can actually replant them and maybe grow another pepper or onion. Now I split it, and now I'm gonna peel it. Instead of trying to work my knife around that whole onion and get the peel off, I know I'm gonna dice it, so I go ahead and split it anyway and make it quick. So that's one half, and we might have to use this half, I'm not sure. We'll go ahead and get it ready anyway. So that's two halves of that onion peeled and ready to cut. Now to dice it, like I said, to make them cry, make you cry less, work quickly. So to do that, I'll show you a little trick that I do in my kitchen and have been for years. I'm going to keep the back side of this onion intact while I dice it through. And to do that, I'm going to leave a little bit of my knife over the edge, like so. And in a downward backwards motion, I'm going to cut through this onion. But as I'm doing that, I'm leaving part of the onion intact. Whoop. So now it is fully diced or fully julienne, but it's still intact. For the most part, we can move it around. It's in one piece, so it's a lot easier and faster to dice. So we'll turn it 90 degrees, we'll come forward through it, just like that. Again, trying to make the same uniform size of the onion as we did the red pepper, as well as the pineapple. We want that consistent bite. I think that's enough red onion for our salsa today. We won't need to cut the other half. So that'll go right into the bowl for our pineapple salsa. And what's next in the pineapple salsa? We have our pineapple, we have our red pepper, we have our onions. I think it needs a little bit of green color, don't you? A little bit of green color would be nice in there. So let's do that with some cilantro. I've got fresh cilantro here, washed here in my shop. When you get it home from the grocery store, it might be a little wet from the misters. That is not cleaning it, that's just to keep it wet and fresh looking and making it appetizing for you to buy at the store. So when I get it back to my house or to my shop, I take the cilantro, really any fresh herbs that I buy at the grocery store, dip them in a large bowl of water, fill that bowl all the way up, mix those herbs around, mix them, mix them, mix them, let all the sand and the dirt that is naturally attached to them from when they grow, let all of that fall to the bottom, and then scoop those herbs out from the top, dry them off, and then you're ready to cut. If you don't believe me, try it one time and see what you have at the bottom of that bowl. You'll never not do it again. So the fresh cilantro, you know, it's got that kind of citrusy, peppery, amazing flavor. Whenever I'm thinking about summer, whenever I'm thinking about tacos especially, always my brain goes to cilantro. We're just gonna nicely and quickly just chop some of this fresh cilantro up. And cilantro stems are just fine to use. You can use cilantro stems when you're cutting them up, they are perfectly fine to use. Parsley stems, I stay away from, they have a really bitter flavor, but the cilantro stems 
are just fine to use. So I'm going to pull a couple of these leaves off so that we can use them as a garnish on our taco because we eat with our eyes first, right? It's got to look good before it tastes good. Pull some of these off. We'll set these to the side. That'll be our garnish before we go ahead and chop the rest of this cilantro up. That'll be good. One or two more here. One or two more. And there you go, fresh cilantro for our garnish. Now let's go ahead and chop the rest of it. We're gonna use some of it here in our salsa, and we're gonna use some of it in our cilantro lime crema that we're gonna make here shortly. So we're just gonna get all of our prep out of the way with the cilantro right off. Run that knife through there, and as I cut it, just the smell of the cilantro just is just filling the entire room. It's really making me hungry. We gotta hurry up. So some of this fresh cilantro right into our salsa here. There we go. We'll put the rest of it here to the side because that's gonna go right into our crema next. Now some limes. So roll these limes out. When you roll a lime or lemon, you're gonna break up the membranes inside which is gonna make it a lot easier to juice. You'll get a lot more juice out. So we'll take cut one and a half, cut two and a half, and squeeze these lines ugh, right in there. These are a little tough, so I gotta squeeze hard. But the nice thing about limes is they don't have any seeds, so you can really get in there, and squeeze it as hard as you can. You don't have to worry about seeds jumping in. Kinda use your fingers and break that up. Really cool, you have a lime squeezer or juicer at home. I unfortunately don't have one, I gotta use the old hands here. But if you have a lime juicer or a citrus juicer, it'll make this job a lot easier. So that's one lime. Here's two limes going in. And the lime is gonna mix with the pineapple juice, it's naturally, naturally gonna come off, and it's gonna make the, the juice of our salsa. Also, when we add some salt to it, the salt will pull out the natural juices as well making that nice liquid that you're going to be expecting in that salsa. We don't want it too dry, but we also don't want it too wet. We want a nice, happy medium. It's all about balance. Good cooking is all about balance, both of flavor, of texture, and of moisture level. So, there's our saw for our salsa. Check that out. Look at the colors there. That is beautiful. Can you see that? We got our bright yellows from our pineapple, our red from our peppers, purple from our red pepper, or red onion, and then that green from the cilantro. Now for some seasoning. We're gonna add a little salt, like I said, that's gonna bring out the moisture in it, as well as help balance some of those flavors out. A little bit of pepper, just a touch, just a little bit of pepper to bring it forward. I'm gonna add a little bit of crushed red pepper, because with the sweetness of the bell pepper and the pineapple, I want a little bit of touch of heat to go with my taco. When I think taco, I think heat as well. And then I'm gonna finish it off with a little cumin. That cumin is gonna give you nice earthy tones and really kind of make it a salsa that you're used to eating at really any of your favorite restaurants. Oh, we're down in Mexico if you've ever been down there. So mix that up, make sure that is all combined and we'll set that to the side. And this, oh, I really wish you guys could smell this because that is smelling right. Just in time for lunch gonna be delicious. So we'll set that to the side off with our fish. And now the last but not least little part of this taco that we're creating is our crema. We're gonna make a little cilantro lime crema that's gonna drizzle over the top. It's gonna bring everything together, give us a little bit of that nice mouthfeel that we're looking for, a little bit of creaminess that might counter out, counterbalance the heat that we just added to that slaw. And to do that, the base of this is just some, some table crema, kind of like a Spanish or a Mexican sour cream for lack of better terms. Use it on a lot of different things. It's a lot looser than, than the sour cream you might be used to, but it's very versatile. You can really add anything to this and make it your own. You can make it spicy, add chipotles to it. You can make it sweet. Uh, today we're gonna do cilantro and lime. So for that, back in with our fresh cilantro that we diced, or that we chopped, right in there. And now we're not only gonna add the juice of some limes, but first we're gonna add the lime zest. I really like working with the citrus zest. I do it in my classes all the time. It's one of my favorite ingredients. Uh, not only does it add the nice citrus notes that you're looking for, it's very aromatic. 
which helps as you're eating it. As you go to take that bite, you're breathing in all that fresh citrus scent, but it also is really pretty. So we're just gonna lightly zest this. I'm using my microplane to get this job done. And a microplane is a great tool, very versatile. You can use it to do it for lemons and limes and oranges. You can grate garlic or ginger on this piece of equipment on this tool. Nutmeg works really well for nutmeg, but it also works really well on your knuckles. So hold tight of your citrus and be very careful because as well as it does with citrus, it'll do just as fine with your knuckles. That is not fun ever. So when you're zesting a lime, make sure you only get the green or the yellow, if it's a lemon or the orange, if it's an orange. You don't want to get really far down in there and get the white stuff. That's called the pith and it is extremely bitter. It can really change the flavor of the dish. So that's one lime zested. We're going to do two limes because I feel like it's a two lime kind of day. And these aren't super big. I'm not putting any pressure on this microplane. Just, just the weight of the lime itself is doing the work. If you put a lot of pressure on there, you're going to zest right down into the pit extremely fast, and that is not what you want to do. There we go. Finish that off. Tap, 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 a roux. Take those, cut them. And we've already rolled these out. So we've got all of the membranes broken up. We should get a lot of juice out of these. Look at that. A lot of juice coming out of these limes. Dad joke of the day. What do you call a lemon without seeds? A lime. Now, for seasoning, we're gonna come back in very simple seasoning. Just a little salt. Bit more salt and then a touch of cracked black pepper, fresh cracked black pepper. You can buy it in the store or if you have a pepper mill at home, that is really great. Just gonna grab a whisk, mix this all up, and see how we're doing. There we go. It's a little thick. I'm gonna add a little bit more lime juice to loosen it up a little bit, but already you can see that we are working with nice sauce for this top. All the juice out of there. One more half. There we go. That was juicy. Last half. Get yourself a lime squeezer. It will make this job a lot easier. I'm going to the store after this and get myself one. There we go. All that juice out of that lime. Mix it around. And there we go. That's the consistency I was looking for. A little looser. It's going to drizzle really nicely on that taco, but it's also going to kind of hold its shape. It's not going to be too runny and kind of falling all over the place. So there is our crema. We have our slaw working. Let's give that one more toss. Make sure those flavors are coming together. There we go. Give it a little toss. Oh, making a mess. It's okay. Seasoning the fish for later. There we go. And now over to the stove to cook this amazing mahi mahi. Ready for our taco. Ready to cook these mahi mahi taco pieces. We've got our saute pan here over the heat. I'm gonna use a little bit of vegetable oil to get this sear on. You might think that olive oil is best. You might use olive oil exclusively at home. For me, I'm gonna use vegetable oil because I don't want to add any of extra flavor to the fish. I like the flavor that we have there. And also the vegetable oil has a lot higher smoke point. So it's not gonna break down. It's not gonna burn as quick. You're gonna be able to use it a little longer without having to worry about that fish burning or browning a little further than you like. So just another couple seconds, this will be nice and hot, and we'll test it by touching the fish into the pan, and we're gonna listen for a really high-pitched sizzle. So check it out. Oh, you hear that? That's what we're looking for. That's how we know we're ready to go. Gentlemen, start your engines. Fish going in the pan. I'm gonna start it with these flat sides. When it sears up, it'll have a really nice visual look to it. One at a time, lay them away from me so that they're not gonna Flatter me as we're cooking. There we go. A couple more in there. Don't overcrowd the pan. That is a mistake that some people make. They put too much in the pan, overcrowds the pan, it brings the heat down, and you're not going to get as nice of a sear on your fish or on your chicken or on your steak. Really, anything that you're cooking, you don't want to overcrowd the pan ever. It's kind of a big no no. So, give it a little shake here, make sure they're not sticking. There we go. Beautiful little shimmy shake there. And that's gonna hang out about three to two to three minutes per side. Uh, 
before, and it, as you watch the fish cook, you can actually see it cook from the bottom up. It's kind of neat how fish does that. It gives you a road map, and you can literally watch it cook as it's going through the process from the bottom all the way to the top. So that's what you can check out and watch it go all the way through. Don't overcook it. We don't want dry mahi-mahi. We want really nice, moist, succulent mahi-mahi top. All right, so this mahi's been cooking for two to three minutes here on this side. We're gonna go ahead and give it a peek around. Look at that. Look at that caramelization. Oh, that's beautiful. Nice. These are gonna be some awesome tacos. Look at the color on that one. Can you see that? That is what we're looking for, that caramelized seasoning. The natural sugars of the fish are coming out. It's gonna be delicious. There's another really pretty piece. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's another one, check that out. Look at that crust on there. When you eat it, it's gonna have a nice bite to it, a little crunch that you're gonna come through, and it's gonna be really nice and moist and tender on the inside. It's gonna be awesome. So while these finish up, just another couple minutes here on this side, let's get our grill pan ready to go, and we're gonna warm up our taco shells. You don't wanna serve a, a nice, beautiful taco that we cut the fish and made the slaw and made the sauce, and then ruin it by putting it on a cold taco shell. So we're gonna just take that, make sure that grill pan's nice and warm, and then grill up our nice shells. So as you're cooking these mahi tacos, it's okay to not know 100% if they're ready or not. And I'll show you the little trick. You can just kind of take one out and peek into it and pry it open a little bit and see, ooh, it's hot and juicy. Look at that steam. You see how it's nice and white all the way through? That is a beautifully cooked mahi portion. Mahi, mahi, the fish so nice, they named it twice. We'll go ahead and kill the heat on that, turn that off. We got our shells working here, warming up here on our grill pan. If you don't have a grill pan, you can put them in a regular saute pan, that'll work fine. Now let's take this mahi, mahi off the pan and start putting it on our plate, ready for our taco. All right, we have our mahi-mahi grilled or seared to perfection right here. Our taco shells are nice and warm. It's time for lunch. Grab our plate, take our shells off our grill plate. Now I'm using a street taco shell, the smaller size. They're about four or five inches each shell. And I do that for a couple reasons. One, I think it emphasizes the fish a little better or the chicken, whatever you're doing. You kind of let the protein be the star of the show and not necessarily all of these carbs and all of the shells, but also I like to eat lots of tacos. And if I'm eating a lot of small tacos, it makes me feel better about myself than eating lots of big tacos. So just a little ego stroke there for you. So we'll set these up here on our platter. I think we can fit another one. Let's see here. So to start, let's put our fish right on the bottom. Nice huge piece of fish on these tacos. I said I like to make the taco be about the protein, not about all the other ingredients. So when that's, with that said, I think we're gonna hit this one out of the park. Nice mahi-mahi going right down in the center, big chunks. Woo -hoo -hoo. Man, it smells good in here. Now for our salsa, We'll take a little bit of our salsa, let's mix it around, let's taste it first, make sure we have our seasoning right. Real quick. One time. Mm. Mm. Okay. Wow. I'm a little biased, but that's really good. Take our another spoon, get a clean one. I just tasted this with that one. A little bit of that fresh salsa, look at the color. That pineapple salsa right down on top. Work our way down. And you want to scoop a little bit of the juice that's kind of create, been created with it. Scoop some of that out with it. It's not going to hurt you. It's just going to make it better. A little bit down all the way through. Oh, yeah. If that doesn't look like summer to you, I don't know what else will. Now for our crema, we're just going to take a little bit of our crema just kind of put a little dollop of our crema right there on top. Again, this has got that cilantro, that fresh cilantro and that lime. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. It's gonna cool down the heat of that salsa. 
Gonna really bring it together, give you some creaminess in the center of the taco, which is really what we're gonna look for. And it looks really pretty. Before we go, speaking of pretty, let's garnish it up with some just fresh cilantro sprigs here. A little bit on top, because we eat with our eyes. Let's find some good ones here, guys. There we go. Eat with our eyes first. I like to stand them up to give you a little height. Gives it a little dramatic appearance. Instead of just kind of being flat, you can stand them straight up in the air and visually really make a nice presentation. Just like that. So while we're finishing this, in the comments, let me know where you like to get tacos. What do you like to do with tacos? What's your favorite taco? Here at the beach, where do you like to go for tacos when you're here on vacation with your family? Or if you're lucky enough to live here like I do, where do you go on just a regular Tuesday afternoon for Taco Tuesday? Everybody loves a Taco Tuesday. Where do you like to get them? But there we go. Cilantro, lime crema. Underneath that is our pineapple and red pepper and red onion salsa with a little bit of sweet, a little bit of heat, and a lot of delicious. And then the star of the show, the Mahi Mahi. So nice, they named it twice. Sweet, fresh, right out of the boat. Captain Marcus and his crew really did a knock-up job bringing this fish into us. If you didn't catch our episode when we met Captain Marcus and his son, make sure you should like and subscribe those buttons down below so you can check out those other episodes. But before we do that, I gotta eat. This looks too good. Which one do I want? Let's go with this one here in the back. So it's a beautiful presentation. We'll just pick that up and see what, that taco is all about that fish. The fish is the main show, star of the show. That's what we wanna do. For one second here, you gotta get your taco stance so the drip, the juice don't go down over top of you. And then, mm. oh man, guys. Wow. The fish, really nice and juicy still, not overcooked. Got a nice crunch from the sear. Comes right in with the heat and the sweet of that salsa. And then that crema just kind of rounds it all out. That is a great taco. Well, that's all for today, guys. Make sure you join us next week on On The Hook, where we check out the other places, faces, and tales of your Middle Beach seafood. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys. Beach easy. <laughs>